From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hajavandi and Corey Clark. Hello, everybody. Showtime. We're here in the Midtown offices. Myself and Corey. It's Wake Up Warchant, part of the Warchant.com family. As always, though, Wake Up Warchant is presented to you by Zaxby's. Use the promo code Warchant30 to get 30 free days of access to the ultimate seminal sports source. Giving me a glaring look, Corey. I mentioned Zaxby's. Proudly mentioned Zaxby's. You better. You better. They're calling the shots now. They're the captain of the ship hey, now. Hey, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, I am the, the captain I'm now. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now. Um, somebody tweeted at us, and I can't pull it up right now. My phone's not on me, so I feel I feel a little bit vulnerable right now. But they gave us the breakdown of the closest Zaxby's to Omaha. Oh, nice. So, what do we got? I think it's 150 miles. That's I not too bad. 158 miles, he says. Ghost Peppa N8. Mm-hmm. The yep. closest Zaxby's to friend Omaha. Of the, friend of the Corey Twitter. Yeah. Um, Twitter shoot. timeline. If I could go there, I think what I'm going to end up ordering next time I go is they've got, like, so they have all these different meals. Like, you know, you go to any fast food restaurant, there's, like, you know, give me a number three, blah, blah, right. blah. They got one that's three mini sandwiches, like mini chicken tenders on, on just a little bun. Just oh, little little, okay. little mini chicken sandwiches. And you slather every, anything and everything in the Zach, Zach sauce. sauce. Yeah, that should be the salad Good dressing that grief, I use. grief, man. That, yeah, that stuff's great. That blackened... <clears throat> The, the Cajun black and chicken sandwich I had, I just doubt. Oh. And how crazy is it that uh, not until today did I realize, not realize, remember that the foul poles at Dick Hauser Stadium are the Zaxby's foul poles, but it's spelled F O W L. Mm-hmm. Get it, gang? Mm-hmm. Foul, like, you know, bird foul. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. Again, the, the symmetry, the synergy that's going on with this sponsorship is through the roof. Looks like there's some outside of suburban Kansas City. Well, we'll definitely, I'll be definitely be driving through Kansas City, right. probably around lunchtime, maybe a little later okay. on Friday. Right. So, and Brady will be with me. Nice. Um, Stephanie will be with me. So I assume we'll stop and uh, probably get some uh, some chicken. All right. Very well. Do it. Some tasty chicken. Yeah, we're deliber- re- deliberating over whether I'll go or not. I just don't know. Like we, we, I haven't been there, and they keep winning. So well, you don't want to screw go. that, yeah. Nope. Don't and do Brady hasn't been there either. Well, no, you know what? Brady was there for the very first game in Athens. Yeah, him he, and Shannon were there. He started the run. I mean, you want to talk about Tim Becker? Tim Becker, this. Tim yeah, Becker it was that, actually Brady, Brady that kind of kind of flipped it, and um, he's never been to Omaha to watch Florida State oh, play, and, this is the best and they've thing. never won. So you're not really screwing with anything. Like yeah. it's the his first time out there. Maybe he's the good luck charm. Oh man, I've been out there by myself a couple times. Didn't help. Yeah, but maybe bring. Stephanie Long, obviously bring the little guy along for his birthday. We'll be out there. My birthday will be out. My birthday is on Friday. Okay. His birthday is on the following Thursday. Nice. And then we also got Father's Day on Sunday. What is it? All out in Omaha together. What's your What's your zodiac sign? Is it cancer season? Gemini, right buddy. Je- oh, Gemini. Gemini. Oh, strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real oh, strong. Man. Strong like bull. Oh, man. Or strong like twin, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, this will probably be our last program for the week due to travel, but we're going to do a Renegade Express Good questions there. But before we get to that and before we get to um, talk about the baseball program, uh, also want to – I should have sent a shout-out earlier in the show because we're like three minutes deep already, four minutes already. Uh, the new Open, by the way, is voiced by my friends Rocco DeSangro and Noah Mendel. Noah Mendel's a Florida State alum. Rocco worked with me in Alabama. so You know a guy – Is his, what's, his real name is Rocco? Pretty sure. Rocco. I actually know his first name – Oh, I think Rocco's his middle name. I think his first name is Steven because I think his father's name is also Steven. His dad is actually uh, was a longtime ACC ref. Oh, cool. Yeah, should maybe get him on the program one day. Yeah, that would be interesting. Like, why did why did he hate Florida State? Yeah. Why did he never call a hold against the opposing exactly. team? Yeah, you can do that. But, yeah, he's in Huntsville now. He's a good dude. I actually, It'd I'm be not... cool if uh, his – so his middle name is Rocco? Pretty sure. I think it's Steven Rocco. It'd be cool DeSangro. if his first name was Mo. Anyone? No? Sorry. Sorry, save, the, save, the, save the good jokes for the car ride. It's <laughs> yeah. going to be a long drive. It is indeed. Have you have you looked at how you're going to break it up at all? No, it'll depend. So we're going to go pick up Brady on Thursday. I'll probably get into Atlanta around 630, so there won't be much traffic, which is nice because there's not a lot of traffic yeah. around rush hour in Atlanta. 
And then I figure we'll be on the road till at least midnight, maybe a little later, depending on how long I can go. Plus, we gain an hour because we're going central. Oh, that's right. That's right. So I figure we pull over around midnight central time, and then we'll have about eh, another eight hours when we get up on Friday. Not bad. Okay. Not bad. Maybe hit a. Maybe hit a. Obviously, we'll hit a Zaxby's. You sound really optimistic though. Talking about you're going to roll in the Kansas City around lunchtime. If you're well, wait. then I said a little later. Yeah. So we might. Well, we get up if we get up at nine on Friday. I figure we get. I figure we get into Omaha by four. Is what I'm thinking. Man, you're really maybe optimistic. Five. Maybe I like five. the optimism. I, again, Florida State actually does open up Saturday. Primetime game against Arkansas, 7 p.m. It'll be on ESPN. We'll talk about that shortly. We'll talk about Renegade Express questions. But first, uh, this was trending on the Tribal Council. Council, Council, All right. Council. Okay. Uh, this happened actually several days ago, but we were just caught up in the in the afterglow of, of going to Omaha. By the way, I didn't – uh, 17th time, 23rd overall for the program. Um, I haven't heard the new opening. Oh, okay. When did it start? Uh, about whenever Zaxby started. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. Yeah. I because mean, you know, I'm talent, everyone. I just come and do my thing. I'm does. like Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp never watches a movie he's ever been in. He just comes, gets paid, and yeah. leaves. Yeah. So I don't really go back and listen. Right. I live it. But I will uh, – so I, when people uh, compliment you on your bumper music and all that, I don't know what they're talking about. Right. I assume it's good. Okay. Um, but By the I, way, will, I will go back and listen. I want to hear what what, what, our, what Rocco and who's the other guy? Noah. Noah, what yeah. Rock and uh, Rocco. Dog are saying. Yeah. By the way, whatever song you heard to start the show today, that'll be a Corey choice. We don't have, we haven't gone to you oh, for okay. a while. Oh, okay. All so. right. Yeah, you, you're right. You let haven't. Me, let me know which one to pick on it. Um, there's been some, I don't want to call it discord, but there was a whole little Twitter spat here with some former players. So I don't want to take credit for this. I don't think it's a, it'd be a dubious honor. But Gene Williams did a really good feature with Brian McFadden, former first round or first round pick, former Florida State standout, Super Bowl champion, two time Super Bowl champion. I feel like he right? might have been a second round pick. Second round, I think. But he was a Super Bowl pick. champ and a very good corner for a long time in the NFL, made a lot of money. I think you're all right about second round pick. I'll I'll Google it while I finish this intro and then you uh, go into your soliloquy. Okay. Um and you know, obviously he's talking about the secondary from last season, which was a um you could almost call them the secondary because they were not good at oh, all. Okay. Levante Taylor I was almost <laughs> That was your Morocco moment. Yeah, or even now. <laughs> Levante Taylor, soon thereafter, that story being published, went to Twitter and, and kind of expressed his displeasure with former players that, that choose to criticize the program but don't offer to help the program. I don't. I, I didn't listen to the entire thing that Gene did with Brian McFadden, but I, I had to go through bits and pieces to edit. I didn't, I didn't hear anything inflammatory, but then again, it's not me being criticized. There might be certain things that, that, that kind of trigger people differently than, than people that aren't involved in the firefight. Well, then Travis Johnson kind of got involved in the fray. Um, and then fans got upset at him because – so he, he tweets out. He basically re, he replies to Levante after Levante is basically like, hey, why are you guys criticizing and not helping? And says, I was there last year. This is Travis Johnson, former first-round pick. Correct. I was there last year for an entire week in spring like I was the previous seven years, but last year felt different. Outside of Odell and a couple others, I wasn't wanted like normal, and all that loud-ass music, all practice long, you can't even coach folks up. So then everybody starts getting upset. This gets posted on the Tribal Council. Again, it's trending on the Tribal Council, Council, Council. Uh, it's got over three pages worth of threads and replies. Dante Pimpleton got involved. Yeah, uh, yep. Dante Pimpleton goes to uh, well the Travis is going back and forth. A fan says uh, if you're gonna and Cromartie got involved too. Antonio yep. Cromartie. It's, was, it's it's usually about the same three or four guys. Yeah. So Travis Johnson comes back and says I'm always available. The whole D line knows how to get a hold of me. Them folks don't really want no help. And that's when Dante Pimpleton got involved. Said Odell needs help now. Two question marks. Two shrugging emojis. The best D line coach to ever do it. That coached you. Two question marks. Wow, come on, Trav. You're a real dude that we chopped it up in the fig a few days. You know you're always welcome, and Odell introduced me to you. Don't him like that. I mean, don't do him like that, probably. Right. You know, maybe some characters are out there. Goes on to say, come on back, Coach Tiger, welcome back to all former players. Y'all played here. This is y'all's program. Come back and talk to and help the youngsters. They look up to y'all. Talking about on social media isn't going to help. This is much bigger. Three shish kebab emojis. Um, it's just... How do you, you know, Cromartie, want, Cromartie like invited the whole secondary to Houston to come he? work out with him, said that he would be coaching, you know, he, they didn't look coached up at all last year. Um, yeah, man, it's uh, the only thing I can really say about it is this is what happens. This is what five and seven begets. 
You you have former players now. If we're going to be honest, now while Travis Johnson and Antonio Cromartie were very good players in college and obviously very good players in the NFL, uh, I think Travis got shortened with an injury, but very, very good players, you know, they weren't a part of the dynasty either. You know, they're not dynasty players. You know, both of them were on one 10-win team their entire careers, if I remember correctly. Maybe Travis was a part of the 2000 team, but I don't think he was. Um, so it's not quite like, I don't know, Derek Brooks – Guys, so what, that, they don't they they shouldn't have their voice heard. I mean, I don't. It, it, no, not it's not that. It's just that um, you, you don't think back to the Travis Johnson, Antonio Cromartie era as the uh, the great era of Florida State football either. Now, it, it, it you know what I mean. Like it wasn't you know, I, and we could all point out to who their quarterback was and who their offensive coordinator was, and I sure I'm sure they would, and that those are rightful assessments. But you know, th- they were losing four games a year too. Uh, they weren't losing seven. They went to bowls every year. They were certainly better than this. But I, I don't um, – I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's not like they weren't great players. They were. They were not ever a part of a great team, either one of them. So what, they can't talk up about their alma mater? Man? Well, it, it's not talking up, though. It seems to be you're not – you don't it, – it seems to be talking – down. No, I mean, they, they can't speak up about what they're feeling. I'm not saying they're trying to prop up it. I mean, obviously, it's not a good thing to go and air this sort of stuff out. I think Dante, unfortunately, probably has to take, like, the high road in that situation and probably Ignore be like it. Odell, like, hey, man, give me his number. Let me call him instead of tweeting back at him. But I guess you don't want to let this go unchecked. Kind of a tough situation, probably. Yeah, I think this, this, to me, more than anything, I think this is just confirmation bias. If because I think you know obviously there's there's people on the on the extremes I think there's people that want Willie Taggart gone already there are people that think that anything that's happened now is still not on Willie Taggart this is all still Jimbo stuff and and Willie's fine give him time leave him alone and there's there's most of us in the middle that are like this didn't look good we realize there were some bad things going on but this still did not did not look good enough to to be in a situation where we're just going to let everything slide and feel good about yeah. it so it's a confirmation bias thing where. It, you're you're gonna look at it and be like, oh yeah, look, you know, Travis said the music is is too loud. You can't coach people up. Travis Johnson, first round pick, Brian McFadden, two time Super Bowl champ- champion, uh, Antonio Cromartie. They they say that they're not they're not welcome back. They won't take their their uh, their coaching. That sucks. That's that's not cool. And then you got people that are like, well, I mean, what are those guys really gonna do? Like, who cares? Like, if you want to help the program out, you know, reach out in other ways other than going on social media. Well, yeah, and that's kind of what my point was was getting to. And I think Dion even gotten involved at some point too. And so we got to oh, quit yeah. bashing um quit quit bashing the players or the current coaching staff. But I feel like a, a Derek Brooks or a Warwick Dunn, you know, they never said anything. And of course there wasn't social media back then, but you know, they weren't criticizing Travis Johnson and Antonio Cromartie's teams for stopping the 10 win seasons and for stopping the top five finishes. Again, nobody's blaming those two guys because they were awesome, but they were on teams that didn't live up to the Florida state standard that had been set before they got there again, through no fault of their own, but it wasn't their fault. And I don't think either one of them would have probably appreciated it that much either at the same time, man, Levante Taylor, like, you know, there's no, and I know he deleted the tweet, but like, why, why even? Why even start that? It, it, Brian McFadden came on War Chant. He was asked questions. He gave um, expert analysis and opinion of what was what happened with the secondary, what was wrong. He's just doing his job and answering questions. Don't take it personally, Levante. You weren't very good last year. I mean, you weren't. You were really good as a sophomore. You weren't very good as a junior. We know you had injuries, but you weren't. You don't have to take that as a personal affront and say these guys even. What I think the Florida State fan base, and certainly I, I believe this, um, I mean, I'm speaking for myself here. I think media thinks this too. It's really, really tiring to hear the whole don't love us later. Don't be a fan later. Don't be a fan later. It's just a tired – it's just tired. And I'm not saying Levante said that, right. but it's under that guise. You know what I mean? It's in that same vein of don't love us later. Don't, don't be a hater now and love us later. It's like, man, there's – just give us something to love. Quit talking on on social media about what's going to happen later. Just do it. Do it, something, maybe. D- hey, yeah, that, that's actually something you might want to hashtag. Um, so yeah, that's that's all. I, and um, I don't, you know, Travis Johnson is. I, I had him on my old podcast that I used to do. He's really, really entertaining and, and a smart dude and uh, um, loves his cigars. He does his avatar. And more than anything, I think 
not more than anything, but close to it. He loves Florida State. Like, this is his place. Odell is his guy. Like, you know, I don't necessarily take that as him insulting Odell. And I get it. There are a lot of people that watched last year and like, what is this? What was that? This is Florida State. And Travis Johnson put more blood, sweat, and tears into Tallahassee and Florida State than Willie Taggart has so far. You know what I mean? He was there for four years and grinded it out on that practice field with Odell Hagan. So did Cromartie. So I get they're invested. It's their program. And if they don't feel welcome – then that's something that has to change. What, something has to change one way or the other. It's never a good look when a former great play, former great players get into Twitter spats with other former players, which has happened before, or with current players. But I don't know. I mean, they're all they're all their own men. They can do what they want. It's just it may. I, I assume most Florida State fans probably cringe at it. Both ways, you know what I mean? That's always saying, Trap, Antonio Cromartie tweeted, if y'all mad over some criticizing, y'all get over it. Secondary looked like crap last season, and that's because your coach can't coach his own defense. Yeah, you see there's, what I mean? There's no way in hell if I'm the D.C. and the secondary coach that the back end would look that confused. Dion, can we please work together? We have good coaches, and they're recruiting their butts off to bring in more talent that fits their scheme. All caps, we will be better this year coaching and playing. Let's get on one accord and do this. Hashtag truth. He's always spitting truth bombs, yeah, old man, Dion. So yeah, Dion's Dion's certainly the voice a believer. Of reason. Dion's the certainly voice a believer. Of reason. Um, but also, you could read what Cromartie wrote can't there. Can't do that's not nice. You don't like it. You can't do it. It's not yeah, a great look. Can't do that. It's not a great look to criticize so, you know, blatantly, the coaching staff and the secondary from last year. But does he have a point? Yeah, well, absolutely. I, 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 I'm you just called concerned. him the secondary. Yeah. So it ain't like he's not speaking what a lot of people are thinking. Yeah. They were confused a lot last year. There were guys running free the whole season. Yeah. So I get it. They're frustrated, man. It's a frustrating time. This is what 5-7 and seven does. It's a lot of uh, guys that really love the program. I truly believe that. Um, that. That want it to get better. And sometimes, again, this is what five, this is what happens when you go 5-7. and seven. Also, that, I, But again, my point going back to Travis Johnson and Cromartie have the right to say whatever they want. They, they put in a lot more blood and sweat than either one of us. Um, but be mindful that you didn't exactly preside over greatness. Not even that. Like, just think about if, if I, I'm trying to think of, if Renard Wilson had had talked poorly about the way you played as, while you were still in school. Yeah. Or if Dion had said, Cromartie, man, what you know? I hear all this talk. You 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 know when are you going to start making plays? Now Cromartie was good when he was right. healthy, but still. Or if Ryan Kelly was like as on you hem and haw and uh too much on the podcast, like Ryan. Sure, easy, sure, man. Yeah, or you Why know, gotta be that way. Uh, yeah, I'll, Ben Jones with me and my writing at War Chan. There's a lot of a lot of shoes we've had to fill, but I'm just saying that wouldn't. I don't think either of those guys would have been. Um, I, yeah, I can't speak for them. I don't know. It I it wouldn't have looked great. They wouldn't have felt great no. if Derek Brook, the Derek Brooks of the world, would be like, "Man, what what happened to our dynasty? Yeah. Y'all screwed up our dynasty. What happened to our dynasty? Yeah. Um, get, start winning games." I, I think that's what that that was kind of more the the point I was making is that you know it just doesn't do. They're allowed to have their opinion. Um, also, like logistically, is it possible? Can you like what we're gonna have the FSU Legends Camp? Like Dion Cromartie, yeah, that, they're going to come to town and help coach players. Up. Why? I why not? I, I know that used to be the whole part Can of you Miami. Do that? Like, that's the thing. Yeah, that's of course, a, absolutely. The, part of Miami lore was guys would always come back to Miami and work out and, and keep the standard going. But I just don't know how practical. I mean, what are they going to do? I know Travis was out there last year. I think yeah, Travis was out here a lot. I've seen out him there. out there a lot. I mean, he was literally in the trenches working with Odell. He um, legit, yeah, and I think he does that. I think that's, uh, a, a, I don't know, I want to call it a side gig, but that's right. something he's done in the past is work out defensive linemen. I think he's very good at it. I think Cromartie might be able to, I, you know, I, there's some things Cromartie d- did and that obviously can't be taught being that fast and tall and all that. But I think, um, you know, I'm sure he could help too. I'm sure Dion could come down and help for a, a few weeks. They did do that at Miami all the time. Um, but, you know, it, speaking, in, if Travis and those guys don't feel welcome, Again, I don't know why, but you know, maybe you don't want to help the people that uh that you don't think want your help. Yeah. Anywho, yeah, so that happened. Just wanted to throw that out there. You know, get your your thoughts on it. The people know that we're still paying attention to football. Yeah, it's, it's just gotta it's, be less than it's less than a hundred days. I imagine. The uh, football, we're getting right? close. We're getting close, but it's a uh, it's just you know it blo- it blows by. It's not that big a oh, deal. Yeah. You know, you win eight or nine games, people are back on board. But until then, you <laughs> that's, know, how it, that's how it is these days. You, you win eight you, nine games. You you deal with you deal with this stuff, man. You just deal with it. They're they're former players that are upset that you know. I'm now 
the dynasty might have ended in the early 2000s, but that bowl streak kept going. Right. And now that ended in one year, and then you don't want a player on that team being so sensitive to criticism. You know what I mean? Like, I get that. I get why you would why you would maybe not appreciate somebody being so sensitive to criticism, especially, especially because BMAC wasn't, like, you know, calling him names or anything. It yeah. wasn't outlandish what right. he was saying. I mean, just, you, you know, deal with it a little bit. All right. With that said, let's get to the Renegade Express. I mean, I think there's going to be many baseball-related questions, so we'll get into it there. Uh, the questions posed to the fan base. 17 trips to the College World Series, never won fewer than 40 games, regardless of the outcome. How do you size things up now, or at least this year, on a micro level? How do you compare this against other sports emotions? Uh, we talked about the civil war on social media. What are your thoughts on current players and alums sniping at each other on Twitter? Who's coming to Omaha? Brady Clark might make a cameo. Bring your Sharpies. That's the, <laughs> there we go. Nice. That is the backdrop. All right. Tommy Hawk Chop says, uh, wake up Omaha, but with all caps <laughs> Omaha. I never had any doubt. Yeah, right, he puts yep. in there. Baseball is such a streaky sport that you never know when a team can get hot and when it will happen. If by chance the Magic Pixie Dust continues to ride the Knolls to a championship, uh, Aslan, you have to sell all stock and all FSU athletic teams to keep us winning. You were buying on the baseball team until they were no hit and lost to Wake in the ACC. Actually, I sold it before the ACC debacle. Uh, once you left the bandwagon, I'm just saying, I have evidence to back it up, off they go. You were buying on softball. Doom the Super Regional. <laughs> Buying on basketball. Failed to make the Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. Buying on Jimbo. Left for AM. Good riddance. So sell football stock now. We might win the national championship. Okay. I see what he's saying right. there. Okay. I, I, that's 100% true. Dump it all. I Corey, feel like, though, the basketball, they got to the Sweet 16. I don't think we considered a disappointment. All those other things were disappointments. Mm -hmm. I don't know that not making the Elite Eight classifies in the same cat in the They all got category. hurt. You can't blame him that David Nichols got hurt and, you know, Phil's foot. Uh, was Didn't never it. right. Right. Was never yeah. right. And then poor Trent going on nine toes out there. Who are we talk? Were we talking to Stan Jones about Kofer before the season? He said he looked like a first round pick. Like in yeah. the preseason, he mm. was incredible, yeah. and that he would have probably gotten a really look if he'd have been healthy, like a real look late first round, second yeah. round. You, yeah, we just forget how good he was at the end of last year because yeah. we saw him as a senior, and he just or his second senior year. He was just kind of a role player. But, man, he was really good at the end of his uh, junior season. I have a question for Corey. Okay, let's hear it. I was thinking about the best recruiting classes feature that you did and the most important players in those classes. But I believe key players from other classes are what make a difference between a dynasty and two-year runs. Would FSU be FSU without Dion, Marvin Jones, Derek Brooks, Charlie Ward, who were not just good players but exceptional leaders and embedded that culture over the three, four classes they played with while at FSU? Can Willie find those type of players? You notice those guys don't badmouth the program or current coaches in such a public way. Well, they also – no, they don't. Um, they don't. Uh, but, again, you don't want to tell people don't don't care – like, Travis Johnson tweets all the time about a lot of things. He'll tweet about the Houston Astros. He'll tweet about softball. Uh, he tweets all the time. He loves Florida State, and he loves just to tweet. And when he's emotional about something, he's probably going to tweet about it. And he's emotional about Florida State. Um, yeah, you know, is he going to find more Dion's? No. I mean, is that was that the question? What was the exact I question? I guess, uh, can he find players that are not just good but also exceptional leaders that can embed a culture and – well, I, he's, that, I do think that – I mean, I think that's what most coaches try to do, let's be honest. But I think Willie uh, especially seems to be trying that early on in his tenure here. And, uh, you know, Jaden would be. Jaden Large would be. Correct. I think that's somebody that, that he thinks can be that guy. I think um, – help me out, the big – Dante Lucas. Lucas. Dante I Lucas. think Dante Lucas is a guy like that. I, I think he has, he has tried to do that. I do. I don't know if the Sims kid is that kind of kid. He seems to be. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see if he ends up coming here. Sam Howell burned us all. He burned us all. I don't believe in any of this long-time commitment quarterback stuff. But, yeah, man, that's the, whole, that's the whole goal. And to that point, yeah, you can't just – you can't get a bunch of stars. The reason those classes were so good that I tried to point out the great ones is the depth of them. Not all – now, they weren't littered, all of them, with NFL players, but they were littered with contributors. And that's what you're looking for. You need a hit rate of more than 50% on these recruiting classes to be solid contributors to starters and be good. Anybody, I mean, Corey Mangum was a starter, but that does that mean he, it was a great recruit? No. No, no. I got love for you, Corey. You know that. All Corys stick together, but he wasn't a, he wasn't a great football player. Yeah, we'll see. He's, he's recruiting kids with good character, 
Mm-hmm. They're not five star kids, but it doesn't mean they can't play like five stars. Telvin Smith wasn't five stars. I mean, Telvin Smith, I think, was pretty much what you want, right? Yeah, yeah. He he fits he fits that mold. It took him a while that uh, I think Jimbo um, he had some growing up to do. Let's just say when he first when he first got to Florida State by the by the middle of his junior year, and then obviously his senior year, he was one of the best players on the team. I do wonder again, just the whole timeline and churning through this roster that if, if it is, it indeed is guys that aren't Willie guys, or they're too much Jimbo guys, or they're just too much guys that came to Florida State just for the easy ride to a national title. They thought when they committed back in 16 or 15 or what have you, you know, if, if does Willie have enough time to operate to get those guys out and get his guys and not only get his guys in, but give them enough time to actually grow to be, expected contributors kind of a thing. You know, yeah, you can bring in all these these good line I mean this linebacking class they got right now is really good that's coming in. Um we think. Yeah, according to the to the ratings yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But are they gonna really star in twenty twenty? I mean I mean they might start, but will they be really high end, high high caliber players? You know, no way to know, buddy. No way to know. Gotta play it out straight. You need guys that can play, Aslan. Yeah. You'd like them to be leaders too, but you definitely need guys that can play. Is that, is that what, I mean, Alabama keeps up the standard. I don't Clemson's get it. Clemson's doing it now, yeah. too, I guess. I don't get why it was so hard here. Yeah. But it quite obviously was. I don't get it. I thought those three. I thought Florida State was going to be what Clemson is. Right. I thought it was going to be much more sustained for a longer period, and it would feed itself. And for whatever reason, that culture um, sustained itself. They love that place. They play hard for that guy. And it just did not happen here. But well, it could. hey, that's not to say it won't. I mean, Willie can get it back. Taggart era. Maxwell Gibbs. Wow. To quote Corey, these freaking slappies are going back to Omaha. <laughs> I'll be honest. In game one, when the Knolls were down 4-0, I turned off my television, and my wife and I went for a walk in Central Park and went to Tavern on the Green to partake in National Rose Day. Quit bragging. Boy. Quit bragging. I think that needs to be your thing, Maxwell. Just Austin. Over the top. Yeah, just work in some New York City yeah. thing. Like, that was a – you know, I, I even... took a ferry to the Statue of Liberty. Just right. all these crazy yeah. New York references. Yeah. Uh, boy, oh boy, was I shocked to see Corey's MoMA. Twitter feed. You go to MoMA. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was shocked to see Corey's Twitter feed when it was 5-4. to four. Does the pressure start to mount now that they're in the College World Series? I, You know, I've been thinking about that. I don't think so, man. Like, they're still they're, – they're, they were one of the last four in. They were a three seed. They, 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 nobody expects them. I know maybe they do, and maybe they feel pressure that they know his career is over. But nobody expects Florida State to go out there and win the College World Series. Have we not been paying attention, folks? 23 times. Well, 22 times before it. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. So just enjoy that they're out there because you know they're not going to win it. And I think if they have that mindset of, hey, man, let's just go out there and have fun. Nobody expected us here. Literally nobody did. We're facing a second-round pick, a, a kid that's 12-1 and one in the toughest conference in America. Let, you know, let's just go and see what happens. Let's just have fun and enjoy this stage because two months ago, nobody would have thought we were there. Arkansas is a team that, by the way, I forgot, they were the team that lost last yeah. year after dropping the foul ball uh-huh. or letting that foul ball drop. Uh-huh. So Arkansas was literally one out away from winning the College World Series last year. Um, I feel like they might be a little tight. Like, it's awesome they got back there. That's always good to see. It's like Virginia doing what they yeah. did after Luke getting bounced in the first round uh, two years ago in basketball. Actually, the last time the national runner-up made it back to the College World Series was Virginia in 2015. Yeah, I, I doubt it happens a ton. And for them to get back is re- is really cool. But you got to think at this moment now, they're, they would be much tighter than Florida State because they so, they're in a pretty easy bracket when you look at it. They're the only national seed. They're playing a team that barely got in. There's another team in that same field in the same foursome that was one of the last four in. So they probably feel like they should get out of this and be in the championship series again. Well, there's pressure that comes with that. Meanwhile, Florida State's just like loosey-goosey. Like, hey, man, we got a club kid hitting ninth. Uh, we got a pitcher that can't get us through five. In- we were going to start a kid that's struggled to get through five or six innings here lately. Let's just go. And everybody's going to be cheering for us because of our coach. So let's just ride that and have fun. I think that's the mindset you got to have, man. Don't go out there expecting to win. Go out there to have fun. Baseball's a game, Aslan. It needs to be fun. Go have fun. Don't put pressure on yourself. My concern is, does Mike Martin – Mike Martin saying all the right things. You know, it's not about me. It's about the players. I'm happy they get to go to Omaha. They get to make the memories. Will he, in a one-run game in the eighth inning – Go get Velez. 
Just, you know. Yeah, or do not s- get Velez. Or- just do say something and do something in the dugout that we don't even see on television, but something that, that puts a jolt in a kid in, in, a, oh, in a right. bad way sort oh, of a thing, okay. you know? I'm not saying necessarily a bad coaching I don't think decision. He, yeah, I don't know that he'd do that. I think you're more worried of anything about um, – yeah, just when to take over a managing yeah. things like that. I think it's stuff like that, but I don't think that's that. And I'm not. That's not a criticism. Eleven. That's just college baseball coaches in general. They're very. Yeah. They can micromanage a lot. Yeah. I don't think Drew Mendoza is going to choke up on the bat and and you know pucker up and and and, and fold. I don't think Drew Parrish is going to melt down. No. If if the guys at the top can keep things steady and keep things calm and, and stick to the to the script of the way they've been and and not do anything that's going to be too over the top and, and put a scare in the guys, I think they'll be fine because, again, man, 16 times he had an opportunity, and three of those times he might have had the best team in the field, maybe twice. Maybe oh, I don't know. That. I think it's probably more than that. You know? I, yeah. He's had – some of his best teams didn't even get out there. I mean, yeah, that's the so, nature of college baseball. Well, when you're out there, the fact that it's never seemed to work out, and that's got to kind of start creeping But I don't think head. in the players' heads. That, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't think the players are – Yeah. And I think that's much, much more important. There's only so much a manager can really do at this point anyway, unless he just completely makes baffling decisions, which I, I just don't expect that to happen. But I do think the players should be playing like, man, we already did it for this guy. We got him here. He gets to say goodbye on this stage. We did it. We're the team that did this. We're the team that gave him this. Let's just take a bow and have fun. Everything else is gravy. I'm not saying go out there to lose or not expect to win. I'm just saying that if you have that mindset of, man, I can't believe we got him here. How awesome is this? Then maybe you ride that magic a little bit, just like I think they did in LSU after stunning everyone in Athens. Just like, hey, it's 4 nothing. Nobody believes in us. We're about to – we're getting no hit. And then uh, they win that game. Dude, going back to April, 3-3-2-3-1-2-3. Those are the earned runs allowed by Isaiah Campbell, the starting pitcher. Most yeah. Of the so again, you so. go into this thinking, man, Jeez, we got man. we got Parrish, who's who's he's walked like nineteen guys. Yeah, he doesn't walk guys. He hammers the zone. He did it in that league against some some of the best players in the country. Quite frankly, um, he's very good. He's pitching a lot of big moments and a lot of big games. So you go in there as an underdog. A decided underdog. You have look. We all know what Drew Parrish's ceiling is. He his ERA his ERA is well over five. I think it I'm is, pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, it's over five against the SEC pitcher of the year in a second round pick. They have the advantage. They have a big advantage on paper. Arkansas does. Nobody's expecting you to win this game. So you know, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Go shock the world. Go have that mentality. Nobody believes in us. Keep that chip on your shoulder. Five point one one is his ERA currently. So not well over five, yeah. and he wasn't terrible against LSU. No, he wasn't. He, you know, he didn't go. He didn't. I don't think he got out of the fifth. It was like four and two thirds, I think. And Georgia, or not Georgia, uh, FAU, it was five. So you know, you'd like a little more. I, I and I will first guess this. Um, I would have. I would be pitching Van Eyck in the first game. Absolutely. Elevens. Uh, they're going with Parrish. Um, I think Van Eyck is the kind of kid that would take that challenge and be like, oh, you're the SEC pitcher of the year, huh? You're a second-round pick. Watch this. Right. I think he would take that. I just think he loves that moment. And he's also filthy. He's yeah. really, really good. Um, but like I said after the game, you got to win. You, you lose the first one or you lose the second one, you're still in the same boat. Yeah. Um, that said, you'd much rather win the first one. <laughs> yeah. So I would pitch my best pitcher in the first game. I get what they're doing, though. They've got something that they think is working. But I maybe switch it up because of the opposing pitcher. That would be my take. But, again, the kid they faced against Georgia had his better numbers than this kid, right. the Hancock kid, right? And yeah. they lit him up. Yeah, he's due, due to get dinged up a little bit here. Um, what? I don't know. I, I, I think maybe with Drew, you talked about – maybe you just – you kind of tell him, listen, we just need, we need five innings from you, Drew. Just 15 outs, man. Because you look at Velez, you think Velez now can probably go three innings. Like, you feel like three innings with him is – Yeah, but I don't know. Can you count on him to do that again? Like, are you just going to keep right – I mean, I just – you know, maybe that was just a magical weekend for that kid. I don't know that you can count on Velez to be the guy that is the bridge to J.C. all the time. I don't well, I don't know that he's just nails all the time. Well, it was just a special night for that Maybe squeeze guy. one more, and then you hope Van Eyck can go eight against Texas Tech or Michigan, and then you just have – and then J.C.'s only got to get you three outs. 
No, yeah, sure. I you know I think they'd let JC go for two innings if they have to if they no. get in that. If but no, I'm with you. Though. I I I would like to see CJ go. Cause, and, and I I understand the whole let's not let's dance with the one who brung us here and let's not let's not do what you just said five minutes ago as on that is start over managing or. Or, or get well, that's true. Tight, Don't tinker you know? with it too much. But what I have liked, but man, too, Van Eyck is just well. He's great, man. Yeah. He's he's sensationally loves those moments. Um, but also liked in the in the the second game, they did switch their line. They switched their lineup with Flowers and Nelson. Didn't really make a difference because JC's not hitting the ball all that well right now. But then they put Carter Smith in the middle and backed Nelson up. And in that inning where they scored three runs in that second game, both of them had big hits. Carter Smith had the single up the middle after he couldn't get the bunt down. Yeah. And then Nelson had an RBI single. But So they're not, like, completely unwilling to change. Right. And it's also Tuesday. They might on Thursday or Friday say, you know what? No, we're going with Van Eyck. It's actually Wednesday. It's Sure. I'm looking we're at you right now on kidding. a Tuesday. But you fine folks listening to this will be listening to this on a Wednesday. Thank Maxwell you. Gibbs ends it off with, speaking of the Twitter machine, apparently the former players don't feel welcomed. I'm confused. I thought Willie and the staff were beloved by the former players. I'm just going to say it. If Willie is gone after this coming season, I think FSU should make a run at – I'm not even going to say the coach. Uh, he says Urban Meyer. Ooh. And, oh, then, oh. and then Gold Mom comes off the top rope. A run at who? <laughs> no offense, but one can help. Per your description of your Saturday activities, you woke up and smelled too many roses. Urban Meyer, did you not see the second arrest news? Did you see that? Tony Joyner? I did. That's sad. I don't, and that's not even something that, like. This isn't a rivals thing. Keep yeah, it's, t- not, it's not a rivals thing things. where you want to tally up because these are people's lives that were lost. It's not, it's not something to even really make. It's just really, really sad. It's really sad. And I get it. We, er, you know, Urban deserves all of it. All the blame he's gotten for the culture in that program at that time, uh, it was a what cesspool. What do you do? Good. It was a cesspool. I mean, just, just, there was like, no accountability. What do you? But they still played well, though. No, they did. They did. Well, they had you know Tebow to you know guess, part the waters. Yeah. But um, but yeah, man, he just. I mean, he had incredible talent on those teams. That that always helps when you have those kind of people in the locker room. But they. But, st- I mean, to keep those knuckleheads focused. But you yeah. saw when it went bad. It went bad quickly, and, he's gone. and he jumped quickly. Yeah. So now you don't you don't need Urban Meyer. He's going to be a restaurant owner. Enol underscore two thousand. Let's go, Enol. Morning, fellas. Wake up. Keeping with the reverse psychology theme that seems to be working so well with this group. When will these bums get off their duffs and do something already? Do they not realize this is Eleven's last go around? Albert, can you hit a home run or two when it matters? Yeah, then Doza, are you going to put one in play to score a runner, or just leave him stranded at second? Do we need to call up some random slappies from the FSU Club League? Let's start playing with a sense of urgency. Someone, please step up. Regardless of the outcome, what a ride this team has taken us on this season. May it end with a trophy hoisted high. Hashtag one last ride for 11. By the way, I've been saying it wrong this whole time, everybody. It's actually one last run. I was told by uh, people in the Florida State Baseball Department. It's not one last ride? It's one last run because the sport of baseball. Yeah, but you also ride into the sunset. That's what I was Hey, I'm just, I'm telling you what they told me. All right, hey, it's fair enough. Uh, yeah, well, let's get more than just one run. Let's get like uh, what, 41 last runs. How much time do we have here? I almost I feel like I have like a stem winder of a rant I want to go on, but let's yeah, let's save that. Let's, let's save that for Omaha. Georgia Knowles 86. Wake up, fellas. What do you think about Jimbo's comments at SEC spring meetings about FSU? Also, by the way, Brian McFadden was a second round pick. 62nd overall uh, to the Cl- uh, Cleveland Steelers. Ooh, Pittsburgh boy, Steelers. Yeah. Pittsburgh Browns. Uh, I'm trying to type here uh, because I'm trying to pull up these actual comments from the SEC means that Jimbo Fisher made. I think Matt Baker wrote about it. You know, was, was Jimbo he, Was he asked about where he le- how he left the program? Yeah, yeah. He said he left the, uh, the Seminoles in great shape is what, uh, is what Jimbo said. There's a quote in here I'm trying to find that goes a little bit more than that. They had draft picks. I think Florida State is in great shape. They had draft picks, first-round picks. They've got good players this year. I see their pick to go to another good bowl game. Huh. So that's kind of a shot, right? <laughs> I see their pick to go to a bowl game. So he's saying he thinks they're in great shape. He's, he did not say that I left them in great shape. I think Florida State is in great shape. Not Correct. was. He didn't use Correct. the term was. Uh, okay, well, I, I, you can't really take. Number one, he's wrong. They're not in great shape. Right. Um. But I, I think that's him in Jimbo's way trying to like, hey, it's going to be okay, guys. I, I believe in you kind of uh, way of talking. They have, for, they, have, they have draft picks, sure. 
Florida State always has some draft picks. Some years they have a lot less than others, and that's been these last few. But um, but yeah, I don't. I, he didn't say they were. I, he's not basically. I don't take that necessarily as um, him blaming Willie. I'm sure he does to everyone around him. I'm sure everyone around him. And there's no way that Jimbo would say, "Yeah, I left them in a. I left a mess." It's just he wouldn't do that. He doesn't admit mistakes, typically. So he would not admit that anyway. And even if you think he did leave Florida State in bad shape, and he did, you can also on the counter say, well, he didn't leave him in five and seven shape. Then the counter to that is, well, he left him in five and six shape because that's when he left. I get all of it. It's a back and forth. It just goes back and forth. But I don't, I don't take too much umbrage with that particular quote. Does that make sense? Because it doesn't uh, sound like he's being negative. No. If he would have said, I left them in great shape, that would be incorrect. That would be something you could take offense to. If they win nine games and it's James Blackman throwing it to Maury and Terry, and it's – listen, he left Cam Akers, breaks the single-season rushing record for freshmen. Um, no, he no, left... no, it's all about that offensive line to me. All of it. Okay. They're that not good, clearly. You can't do anything when you're that bad up front. You can't be a good program. But why were they decent in 16 with that, with a lot of subpar pieces? And they, I mean, they weren't well, they that weren't horrid that in 17 either. They weren't that they, – nobody's been as bad as what we saw last year. And we can say that part of that was on Greg Fry or Walt Bell or Taggart, a combination of all I mean, three. Do you really think <clears> – <throat> But they weren't. I mean, they were. They weren't they good were in good. seventeen. They, were. they weren't good in sixteen. But he somehow found ways 18. to beat Florida and beat Miami. He didn't have to play the Felipe, that Felipe Franks. That's right. He didn't have to play that Felipe well, Franks. This just comes back to the unfortunate reality that Willie Taggart is, is going to be living in. I think to a large degree here this coming season, which is if they win nine games, how much credit does he really get? I mean, how how terrible in shape did Jimbo leave them? That if in one year Kendall Browse comes here. Randy Clements, and they figure out they get this offensive line to start averaging 32 points a game. Yeah. Then, well, then I mean, then can Jimbo be like, well, I told you guys they're in good shape. They're going to go to a good bowl game. They won nine games. Yeah. And what, what did I do? Yeah, nothing. Well, it's, it's just, again, that offensive line that was left was, uh, was embarrassing. Well, they're going to pave the way for nine wins this year. Yeah, well, and Akers will run for – we both know that Akers is on a mission, so he's going to run for about 1,400, 1,500 yards at minimum. So, by the way, keep, keep checking on Warchant.com. We'll have an Acres story dropping, I don't know, at some point this summer. Georgia Knowles 86 also asks, what are your thoughts about the new Seminole booster structure? I think I'm going to try to phone a friend and call Ira right now. Man, I called my shot. Sure enough, Ira Chauffel able to make some time for us here on Wake Up Warchant presented by Zaxby's. Ira, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Aslan. Dude, any time. All right, so Georgia Knowles 86 wants to know Ira. What are your thoughts about the new seminal booster structure? I guess, was it Florida State Athletic or whatever they're calling it? Yeah, the, the FSUAA. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and I think what well, UF is the U, UAA, I think. Uh, Sounds about right. Which is what they've uh, traditionally done. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of just kind of getting in line with what most other uh, athletic departments do, the way they, they structure uh, things and have um, a more formal structure a full, more for, formal partnership between the boosters and the athletic department. I don't, it's not a revolutionary thing. I mean, it's not like they're, um, what they're doing is I don't think anything crazy. Um, and it's also not, I don't think it's going to change uh, everything about the order of business, but it, what it does do is it forces them to, to work together. And I think it really became important. I think if you looked at the last couple of years, uh, you know, Jimbo Fisher's tenure and Sam Wilcox's tenure, uh, the former uh, athletic director and football coach, where there just there was very little communication between them and Seminole Boosters. Uh, you know, Jimbo had his views. Seminole Boosters were doing what they were doing in terms of the Champions Club and and some of the projects they were doing. Jimbo didn't really want to hear about it. He didn't really understand why they were doing what they were doing, and he just got frustrated. Stan Wilcox was kind of operating on his own. He and Andy Miller didn't always see eye to eye, so he just started kind of doing what he wanted to do. And so you had like three silos. You had the football staff, you had the Seminole boosters, and then you had the athletics department. And ultimately they, they were forced to work together at times, uh, but there wasn't like a day-to-day -day working together. And I think that's what this does is this kind of brings them all together in a more formal arrangement. Um, but, you know, and I think that one other area I think where it will help um, is that there is at least kind of a dotted line between uh, the Seminole Boosters president, which Andy Miller is in that position now, 
uh, you know, he's probably within a couple years away from retiring. Um, but that position in the athletic director to where there's a, uh, you know, there's, there's more of a, a, a firmer uh, relationship. And so I think ultimately, and also the athletic part, the athletic director will have a firmer um, obligation to interact and, and help with fundraising. So uh, I think it makes sense. Um, uh, I don't know that it's something that people would see a dramatic change of. It's more, much more behind the scenes thing. Um, but I think it's ultimately it's going to help, especially down the road when Andy Miller moves on, uh, you know, David Coburn moves on, John Thrasher moves on. I think it's just going to force whoever's in those positions to kind of work together um, going forward. I had like three follow-up questions, but you answered all of them. So, or or I just talked so long that you forgot them. No, no, I'm being honest, so man. Here's the fil- filibuster. You're off the hot seat. That's Ira Chavel, managing editor of Warchant.com, joining us here on Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Thank you, Ira. Thanks, Aslan. See you, man. The universe is a big place, so you should feel especially lucky. You ended up on the same planet with Zaxby's. And right now, we're cooking up our special Cajun Spice Blackened Chicken for our Cajun Club Sandwich and Black and Blue Salad. It's an intergalactically delicious taste experience, and you don't have to travel light years to get it. The Cajun Club Sandwich and Black and Blue Salad, only at Zaxby's. You're listening to Wake Up War Champ, all Knowles, every day. Now back to Corey and Aslan. Leon Knoll 12. Shout out to Leon Knoll 12. He's been a member for a little bit over a year. Actually, he joined February 20th, 2018. That's about the time I started here. Well, yeah, they probably heard your dulcet tones on the radio one day, and it's like, hey, I need to, I need to see what this war chant's all about. Only this is his fifth only post. Oh, all right, fellas, what a run by these Knolls. I will always appreciate eleven. When that two thousand two team, when that two thousand two team lost to Notre Dame, I was devastated as an eight year old. We were losing so many key players, and I did not think we would be good the next year. Then my dad told me. No matter who FSU loses, the baseball team will always be good. Boy, was he right. It would be the greatest thing to see Eleven end his career by winning that elusive title, not to mention a friend of mine made a bet saying he would eat a product of a horse if the Knolls win it all. My question, are y'all big bat flip guys? If so, what would be your go-to celebration? Thanks for helping the mornings at work go by. Okay. Um... This is good. He, this is he's a millennial. Uh, yeah. He was eight years old in two thousand two. That's good. So we, we that one, yeah. loves the kids. It's not just the other podcasts that are hip. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I do think that's the. This was the one year where I I legit. I know I heard myself saying it because I've I've wondered about Florida State baseball in many years past. Wrung my hands a little bit, wondering if they were ever going to turn it around. This was the one year where it's like, yeah, it's not happening. This yeah. team isn't any good. And to our credit. We were right to be worried. They were the last four, one of the last four teams in the field. They were three seed, so it wasn't like they turned it around and became great again until just now, uh, which is hey, that's good timing. Um, as far as bat flips, yeah, you know, if they're not, I mean, I don't, I, I think I'm okay with them. I, mean, I, I think, love, you, I, I think I'm, you can I'm go over the top with them. But what I want to also see, because you know how the baseball people are all stodgy and they want to respect the game. If you're going to start bat flipping home runs, then pitchers, what do they get to do? I'm hypocritical. I don't like it. Like the pitcher, the a uh, hip thrust, maybe the homeboy Fontenot after he struck out. It's I don't Fontenot, know. right? Fontenot. Sorry, okay. I heard somebody else say it like that. It's like get your Cajun right, buddy. One of the innings, Fontenot. I mean, he struck out like what eleven? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was punching doing it a lot. Out. You know, fist pump. Let's go. Let's go. Flexes. Does the Cam Newton somewhat right. Superman. Okay. Be cool. It's an emotional Easy. moment. Like what Van Eyck did in Athens is the most baller move ever. Just turn then and just, say what's just up. Just kind of just shrug. Yeah. Like, Man, I don't know what y'all wanted to do. Yeah. I just struck y'all. I just that, struck that, outside. That to me, that's awesome. Like the Jose Bautista bat flip in the ALCS or ALDS, whatever it was, two, three years ago. That was awesome. It was great because of the moment. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the bat flips when it's two to two in the third inning. And not in June. Yeah, well, June for college baseball, maybe. Correct, that's fine, but no. but yeah, not uh not June in the in major leagues or like well for college baseball purposes, a, a March game against Stetson, you finally yeah. break up the no hitter, and then you do a bat flip. I don't want to see that, but I also think we can do we can uh, we can start adding things to our bat flips. Yeah. Um, maybe you hit a ball to left field and you know it's gone, and then you pretend the gun the bat is like like a shotgun, 
and it's like skeet shooting. Okay. And you take a knee and like track it to the wall and then act like you're trying to shoot it and then round the bases. Or maybe just hold on the bat the whole time and just point it at the, <laughs> point at the pitcher as you're like rounding the bases. Did you see the Tim Anderson bat flip? <clears throat> yeah, Again, of course. That 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 to me that that's one Where of the he, bat he, flips. So he picks it up by the barrel and slams it down like he's mad at the bat. Ah. Yeah, oh, and, he, yeah, and yeah. he slams it down like he's mad at the bat. That's that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a problem with bat flips. Nia Porti had a great one. Yeah. Uh, the kid for, I think it was Oklahoma <laughs> State great. in the regional had a great one. Yeah. Um, oh, and, when he walked off against Nebraska. And yeah, the, I mean, the those, but they're, they're so – there's it, those kind of moments, right. I get it, man. Yeah, yeah, Ex- yeah. Get excited. I don't even think it's necessarily showing it up, like showing you up. Like it's just you're really excited, and that's how you show that you're excited. When a pitcher gets a big strikeout, like you said – he does the Superman thing or says, let's go, or flexes or screams. Oh. Hitters should be allowed to do that, too. Yeah. I don't think it means you need to be ear hold the next time you come up. Yeah, I don't but want I, if you hit a ba- if you bat flip me, and then the next time I strike you out on three pitches, you might hear something from me, or I might glance at you. You know, that's just how sports is supposed to yeah, work. Yeah. I, yeah, so I don't want to see any <clears throat> over the top from the pitchers. I think the over the top bat flip is cool, but I wouldn't want to see a pitcher – do like a Ray Lewis coming flip your off glove. The... Could you flip your glove? How would you? How would a pitcher? What's the equivalent of a bat flip for a pitcher? Because you don't have a ball in your hand. The only you could flip your hat. You could do like a. You could do a dance on the mound. Like grab the rosin bag and just throw it at the guy as he's walking out <laughs> of the box. <laughs> yeah. Bum. That's, that's fair. Bum. I'd probably, he'd probably be cool with that if you just threw a re- rosin bag at him. Captain D underscore sixty three. By the way, yeah, it would be the greatest thing ever if he wins the national title. I was just, if imagine if Florida ends up winning a national title three years from now with Mike Martin Jr. as the head coach, it would not be anywhere. Yeah, near. It would yeah it would because they would show Martin and his dad in the stands the whole time. It would feel a connection. It'd be goosebumpish, mm-hmm. but not this. this he would is. be come down on the field. He'd give him a big old hug, and it would still be in the family, which would be really neat. It's still the family won one. Now you know it would not be. It would not be this, yeah. him going out with a national championship. I mean, that's that's just that's impossible. Don't even start thinking about it, FSU fans. Just enjoy the moment. Captain D underscore 63, Aslan and Corey, wake up. Oh, by the way, you are up since it's being taped. What an exciting game it was to watch. I have to admit, I thought we would find a way to blow the game, but we didn't. You're not the only one. I got a little bit nervous there. I don't understand where all these FSU baseball fans are so cynical. Right. Like they've experienced postseason disappointment before. I'm excited we were going back to Omaha. It's awesome that Martin and the boys are headed back in his final season as head coach. My question, we know Martin will start or keep the starting pitching rotation the same, but wouldn't it make more sense to start CJ first and then perish on Monday? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we've talked about that. We agree with you. We're first guessing that, so yeah. – Maybe Drew will go out and throw a uh, three-hit shutout. This is Martin Martin's – yeah, why can't I talk today? This is Martin's know. 17th trip and never won. What's the harm of changing things up and maybe getting some different mojo going? Right, but he said it this whole season when we've asked him, he's like, I'm not going to change who I am. Yeah. So, secondly, I know we're at the end of the season, but is there anyone else who can play second base? He makes one to two errors a game, it seems like. Why is he getting any better since he has played this position most of the year? Enjoy your time in Omaha. I'll be glued to the TV here in North Carolina, pulling for our Knowles. Have a great day if you want to, guys. The one he made, um, was it, I, I guess it was the Saturday game or the Sunday game. Which one did he make the error? It didn't he, end up costing him. I think they it got twice. It. I mean, it's like the, the that was the one that angered me a lot more yeah. than sailing it over a first baseman's head trying to turn a double play. You're playing second base, man. You have time. Right. What happened was he played it off his chest. He didn't field it cleanly, but he kept it in front of him, which he did his job. Mm. And then he's looking at the first baseman as he's picking up the ball. He's looking at the runner running. Man, you're at second base. Know the position. You have time to look down, pick up the ball, and just throw it. But he makes some pretty incredible plays, too. And he's had some nice at-bats in the postseason. And, no, I don't think at this point you would you would put anybody. In fact, their defense, for the most part, has been very good in the postseason, M- much better than it had been throughout the regular season. <clears throat> right? Yeah, LSU, he made, he's made a couple plays. LSU's catcher couldn't even hold on to the ball. Yeah. And their first game, LSU batted a third baseman that was hitting like 170. Right. And not in like seven at bats either. Like he played the whole season and was hitting 170. Oh, man. All right, we're done. We're That's it. a wrap That's on it. the That's show. <clears throat> Next right. time you hear this show, at least one of the dudes on the microphone is going to be in Omaha, Nebraska, where Florida State will try to 
uh, get that elusive first national title in baseball. They open up with Arkansas, 7 p.m. Friday, 6 p.m. Central. you got to get used to that. <clears> Saturday, Central, by the way. Saturday. Saturday. Say Friday? Yeah. Saturday, Aslan. Figure it out. So it's 7 p.m. Eastern? 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay. All right. All right. So 6 p.m. out there. Correct. Nebraska time. Nebraska time. Sweet, sweet Hopefully Nebraska. the weather holds off. It's always rains really. Especially on my drive. I don't want to be driving through bad stuff. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and uh, obviously think about me while I'm driving. Yeah, happy birthday, Corey. Happy, I appreciate happy that. Happy birthday. Maybe, we'll, uh, maybe me and Brady will post something. I'll, you know, we'll record something and send it to you for a little uh, – and yeah. Stephanie. The three of us will do like a road trip edition of Wake okay. Up War Chant. Okay. You can hear us uh, yeah, in the car yeah. for about 30 minutes. Yeah. What's the coolest present you've ever gotten for your birthday or most memorable present? For my birthday? Yeah. Um, There was this chick I used to date. No, He's no Corey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's actually going to be a real story. Uh, Stephanie made me that uh, the uh, blanket last year. Was that my birthday? That's Christmas. Oh boy. <laughs> He's well, Corey. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Aslan. Thanks for listening. Take care. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.